it makes sense that fasting would have a tremendous effect on our brain. When we look at how our ancestors operated and when they would go long periods of time between meals, it would make sense that they would have to have a lot of focus. Why would you want to be fatigued and not have your brain functioning very well if you have to be paying attention to what you're doing in order to get food? A lot of us believe that fasting is absolutely terrible simply because you're going to lose all this cognitive function, you're going to have cognitive decline, but that's not the case. It actually does the opposite because it causes your brain to become very efficient. So let's get down to the science. I'm going to make some sense of this so that you know I'm not just full of hot air when it comes down to fasting and its effect on your brain. The first thing that we're going to look at when it comes down to fasting and its effect on the brain is the actual neural activity and what is called synaptic activity. You see, you have these things in your brain and you have these things in your nervous system that are called synapses. These synapses are what allow neurons to communicate with each other. They're sort of the bridge between each other. Now normally we have a high amount of activity that's going on with these synapses and it's causing different kinds of sparks and it's causing cells to communicate in one way or another. But when we're fasting, our body tries to become a little bit more conservative. It becomes a little bit more efficient. So it actually slows down this synaptic activity. Now at first this sounds like a bad thing. It sounds like we would not want to decrease our brain function. But that's not really what's happening. Our brain function isn't really decreasing. Our brain energy is decreasing. And our brain sort of goes into a restorative mode or sort of a restful mode. Well, what does that mean? It means it becomes more efficient. And I'm gonna give you somewhat of an example that's laid out with some simple kind of math to make it make a little bit of sense. If you normally have 100% energy in your brain when you're not fasting, right? When you're eating a normal diet, 100% energy, it's gonna be diversified throughout multiple areas of your brain. So to make things simple, as far as synaptic energy goes and that whole synaptic process, let's say it's just 10 things. So you have 100%, 10% is given to 10 different areas of your brain. But when you're fasting, your body is becoming more efficient and it's turning off mechanisms that don't need to be used. So even if your overall energy directed in your brain is down to 50% instead of 100%, that 50% is being focused in one area at a time. That is why you can feel so much more focused and so much more alert with the task at hand when you're fasting. You see, it takes us right back to that old hunter-gatherer thing. You wanna be able to be focused with what you're working on at that point in time. So even though the brain is slowing down, you're actually in a good position because that energy is being utilized much more efficiently. I would rather have 50% less energy, but have all the energy focused on where I want it, than have 100% energy firing in all different kinds of areas that I don't really need. And now that leads me into the next part, which is talking about neurotransmitter production. You see, when we're fasting, we're also not producing nearly as many neurotransmitters. We're talking about things like serotonin, dopamine, and multitude of other ones. The thing is, is that these neurotransmitters are important, but they're metabolically costly to produce. They cost a lot of sort of internal money for our body to make, meaning they're not exactly the best use of our body's energy, because a lot of times we produce more than we need. So if we, in the same fashion as we did with the synaptic activity, can reduce the amount of neurotransmitters that are produced and become more efficient with them, it takes a lot of load off the central nervous system, and it also allows us to be a lot more efficient and productive with how we use those neurotransmitters. It's also worth mentioning that high levels of synaptic activity and high levels of neurotransmitter production are associated with a multitude of different neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's disease, which goes to show that long term, this extra brain activity is not good. Now, of course, for the sake of fasting, we're talking about the short term. We're talking about the benefits you're getting while you're fasting. But long term, there are copious benefits as well. So it just goes to prove the concept that if the brain slows down, a slower pace of life might just be best when it comes down to longevity and focus. Now let's talk about something else, something called brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF. You see, BDNF is sort of like a brain fertilizer. At least that's what I call it because it grows neurons. It grows synaptic connectivity to be a lot stronger. Now, so when we're in a fasted state or even during a heightened period of physical activity, we start producing more BDNF. Now, we honestly don't know why. We don't know why we're producing more, but we just know that we do. And we do know what BDNF does. So here's what BDNF does within the body. It grows new neurons. It allows neurons to multiply. And it also increases that synaptic connectivity, which in tandem with decreasing that synaptic activity, like I mentioned before, is powerful. Let me explain. 
if we are decreasing the synaptic activity, okay, remember like I said, we're decreasing the amount of communication that's going from neuron to neuron, but we're increasing the connectivity, we are increasing the potency of how that activity is communicated. So let me explain it like this. If you have two neurons that are communicating with each other, and you have a high amount of activity, but you have a low quality connection, you're basically trying to cram 10% of that energy across a broken bridge where things are falling off and the activity is falling through the cracks. But in the sake of fasting, you are actually in a position where you have more neural connectivity with a more efficient synaptic activity. So now you have 50% of your energy, like we talked about, going across a bridge that is really structured and not broken ensuring that the communication gets from neuron to neuron. That's what BDNF does. Not only grows neurons, but it grows the bridge between the two. Now, BDNF also has a powerful effect when it comes down to an antidepressant activity within the body, which explains why when you're fasting or even after exercise, you end up feeling pretty good. You don't feel nearly as down. You feel like you have a lot more energy and your sense of well-being is significantly higher. That's exactly how that process works within the body. So the combination between BDNF and the decreased activity of the brain ends up being very, very powerful. And lastly, this BDNF grows this neural connectivity and it grows neurons in the right areas of the brain. It grows them in the hippocampus, the cortex, and what's called the basal forebrain, all areas that are involved in memory, focus, and overall sense of well-being. Last but not least, we have to talk about how beta-hydroxybutyrate works. I'm always touting the benefits of BHB. It's the main ketone body that we always talk about when we're referencing ketosis or fasting. And it's extremely important to know how it works. But basically what BHB does is it has the ability to be a direct source of fuel for the mitochondria. So in the case of the brain, it looks something like this. Your brain is encapsulated with something that's known as the blood brain barrier. It's a tightly regulated mechanism that doesn't allow much into the brain. The brain is the focal point of your entire life. You need it. So we have to protect it with a golden sword. So the whole idea of the blood brain barrier is to make it so that things don't get in. That means a lot of enzymes don't get in. That means a lot of inflammatory cytokines don't get in. That means a lot of nutrients don't even get in. But beta-hydroxybutyrate, the ketone body that is produced when you're fasting, is so hydrophilic that it has the ability to cross through the blood-brain barrier and be used as a source of fuel. So it crosses through the brain, then it crosses through the mitochondria where the carboxyl acid group is cleaved off and it creates what is called acetoacetyl coenzyme A, which is further broken down into acetyl coenzyme A, which therefore produces ATP. Don't worry about all that jargon. Basically, it means beta-hydroxybutyrate crosses through the brain, gets into the energy powerhouse, and creates energy in the brain much more efficiently. So as you can see, all of these things combined together end up creating a nice trifecta for the brain to have the most efficient source of energy possible. Last but not least, beta-hydroxybutyrate also stimulates something known as mitochondrial biogenesis, meaning the body can now create more mitochondria. So you don't just have a more efficient mitochondria, you have multiple new mitochondria that are more efficient. So hopefully this clears some things up when it comes down to how the brain works in a fasted state. And hopefully it debunks the myth that you're gonna feel foggy and you're gonna feel cruddy when you're in ketosis or when you're fasting. Because quite frankly, it's the opposite. You feel focused, you feel alert, and now we're starting to see that you can actually prevent some neurodegenerative diseases. So as always, make sure you comment, let me know what kind of videos you wanna see in the future, and I'll see you in the next one.